Welcome, guys, hey, to, the Bab- to the Babbling Pastor Podcast. Um, for the last episode of this month, I am your host, Rob. Uh, uh, um, and, and I'm Michael, and I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> threw, you, threw you through a loop there, everybody. All right. So, um, uh, good luck with all those fans, Michael. All right. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then now that I'm Michael, I have to, I have to, like, the pressure's on to to be able to talk intelligently about. Wow, you you are giving in a way that I never have had to as Rob. You're giving. A lot I've always said, Michael, what does culture there. say about right? So hmm. today, today is our last episode in this kind of series we've been doing. It's going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about the church's responsibility in raising children. So we've talked about, so far, we've talked about, you know, family devotion time, family worship, um, us as parents being examples, or just anybody really being an example to, to little ones around you. Uh, last week, we specifically dove into looking at culture and how you engage with your kids and culture. And I think this last one is a really good point that I think I would have forgotten. So I'm glad you, Rob, didn't forget this. But the church's involvement in that. Um, I remember specifically being reminded of this when both my kids were dedicated. Because I I don't know how they do it in your denomination now. But um, I know like the, the Wesleyan Church has this whole thing you read off. And as a congregation, whether you adhere to it or not you're actually saying i will help you raise these children in a godly way like that that's part of it like you you repeat that back um now i don't think a lot of people unfortunately take that too seriously um but i remember like when when Haley was dedicated that the congregation is repeating back we will we we will help you raise this child in the way of the lord as best we can as your family your your extended family of believers um which is a big deal, really, if you actually take it seriously, <laughs> which there's some people that I know that have and some people that have just clearly not. Um, how do you guys do it? Is there like a oh, dedication thing or a? Yeah, uh, it's not a denominational thing. It's just a uh, per our church. Mm-hmm. Um, some Something that I uh, wrote. Um, and it, it, so we actually funny that we're talking about this now because we have a, a dedication this sunday oh okay um which is pretty cool it's always a great yeah. moment it's it's good uh for the church it's an it's an encourager you get to see young families and new mm-hmm. birth and uh, the whole There's thing life. Uh, yeah um but but i so i specifically have a um it's a script is what it is. And I send it to each one of them. And I, I, this, this particular couple has already done one previously. So they like, they know the scoop and and whatever, but I, I have kind of some specific conversation generally with the, the family to, you know, let them know, look, this is called a child dedication or baby dedication. This is what we call it. Um, it's actually a lot less about that than it is about you as parents dedicating yourselves to to raising this child biblically as well as the church mm-hmm. um coming alongside you and raising this child uh, with you and helping you in any way that they can um and it's about you recognizing that they have that obligation and authority and it's about them realizing that they have that obligation as well as christian parents and so um it really is a parent church dedication to raising uh, Mm -hmm. that child or those children um and up train up that child in the way they should go right i mean that's the that's the whole thing so um and i actually uh as a part of that script i i read that little um few verses in deuteronomy that i recited earlier in the month Mm -hmm. um every time because it's such an important like thing for us to understand as the church that look this, you know, um, it, as, uh, it's, it's my responsibility to be, um, even at, at the lowest level to be an example with my own children in front of young parents 
with children yeah. um, as to how I correct them, how I treat them with dignity in public instead of like rah, 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 berating them and embarrassing them and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like all, all of the, the things that we do, um, you know, uh, that all the way up to, um, you know, coming alongside somebody who's really struggling and, and um, doesn't know. So it's, it's uh, a lot like being a member of a church, right? You, yeah, when, yeah. when you become a member, you're giving the church permission to hold you accountable to be a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and frankly, we mean that here, right? It's not just paper you sign, like we've had to do church discipline in the last year. Um, and, um, so this is kind of the same thing. Like you're, you're, it's a permission slip from the parents, um, for help, you know, and sometimes, sometimes that's not help. Sometimes, uh, you know, admittedly that's parents seeing someone raise some uh, child a little differently than they would. And so they think, Oh, it's my obligation, blah, 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 you know, and it's like, no, no, it's fine. You're, yeah. you know. But, um, but I, it's, it really is a, it's a kind of covenantal level thing, I think between the church and, and those parents. Yeah. And I think that's what you just said is really important. So to separate, to, to have an understanding that you are saying that I am here to assist or to be a voice in your kid's life that you can trust. But there's also that line of saying, look, this is, this is maybe your preference of how you would raise your kids or you did. Mm -hmm. That's not like the standard of, you know, it's, it, there is like that distinct difference there. Like we're talking about biblical standards versus your preference in like bedtime or what they eat. Like just cause you're non gluten doesn't mean this kid. <laughs> can't have any gluten, right. I mean, there, there's a distinctive yeah. difference there. You mean uh, they got a sucker? Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're talking more about doctrinal issues, not sugar issues. And the idea of, you know, uh, and here's, I think that, man, what you said before was key to like, if and I think this is missing, this has been missing probably in, in every church I've ever been a part of. And I think it's a really difficult thing to get is that, um, that sometimes when correction comes, if you don't see it as like a family member correcting you, right. As far as like a legitimate help, it can come off as being naggy perhaps, or like over overreach. And then yeah. when you don't take that, like you said, it is a covenantal thing. It's not just like, Oh, we're going to get pretty pictures and everybody dress up today that we can show you later. It is this thing where it's like, I'm saying like, I am willing to take biblical correction from you, but I also understand that it's because it's coming from a place of love and respect and, you know, a part of community. Um, you have like such a big breakdown, I think within churches of like, I'm a member, like that's what it, it's not. I'm a family member. It's like, I'm a member here. Yeah. And that's a totally different level of a voice into a person's life depending on how you understand that. And like you said, how you communicate that I, you've talked on previous podcasts. I mean, outside of this month about how serious that is and the language you guys use to make sure that's clear. Um, but I think if, when it is clear, it's like this beautiful thing that's still hard to do, but you understand that like, you know, it's not a burden, for example, to be like, look, I've got work. She's got work. I, you know, who can we trust to watch these kids? I have a whole church full of people that I can call on. Right. And they have said, I want to help you when I can help you. And to have that work well, and like I said, I'm not going to paint some imaginary Thomas Kincaid painting of this beautiful river where that always works perfectly. But like, there is like this beauty to it. If understood well, that like, I am responsible to help you. I said, I wanted to be responsible to help you in this. And um, like, if we understand church membership, and church, well, more of a, being a part of that community, I guess is probably a better way to say it. If we understand that rightly, then that like the, the church's part in helping raise a kid is saying that like, look, if your kid's not listening to you, I am going to be a voice over here backing you up on that biblical principle. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be that, you know, that, you know, uncle-esque figure or that second mom or that second dad figure in their life that, you know, is, is echoing back to them. Like, no, your parents are right. Like, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, and not being contentious to it. So, which is something yeah. I think out of all the things we've talked about is so lacking really. 
Yeah, that's really important. Uh, that that concept that um, everybody be on the same page. You know, uh, and that's true not only in the whole child rearing thing, but um, but just in in general. When when there's someone that is maybe going through a really difficult time in the church, or maybe um, running through a season of rebellion or uh, whatever. And so sometimes um, those who are in the church as uh, leadership or, uh, or who are in there, so maybe a community group leader um, and myself or whatever, <clears throat> we'll actually get together behind the scenes and talk about the situation um, so that we're all attacking it and saying the same things and making sure that we're all on the same page as to how we should handle the situation. And not, I don't want that to sound like um, th that we do that, you know, kind of a behind the back gossipy kind of yeah. way um, uh, because uh, in nearly every time that's come up, um, it has come up uh, on, and they know about it, right? Like mm -hmm. they know that we're all kind of team working to help uh, to to deal with the situation. But but that's true. With in this, it, it applies directly to this, right? Like um, I I can't have um, one person in church leadership um, and to a child, every Christian adult at the church is church leadership. Okay, yeah. so uh, I can't have one person at the church. Um, you know, uh, for an, an extreme example that, that isn't going to happen, uh, would be, I, I can't have someone saying, yeah, what do you mean you weren't baptized as a baby? Right. And then someone else, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, going, well, you shouldn't be baptized yet. Cause you're like, we all need to kind of be on the same page. And, and if it's something that is, um, that is, uh, like, like that example, mm -hmm. then butt out. Right. If it's something that that's kind of uh, could go either way, it's not like a uh, poor thing sort yeah. of a thing, then then butt out or wait until they're obviously in a position where they would they would like some advice, whether they ask it or or you can tell that they, yeah. you know, um, want want to hear from you. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's well, it's it, it is a responsibility, I think, though, as a parent and, and we can don't don't lose your thought but we can uh we can talk about this after uh but as a parent i i also am not allowed to put the responsibility of my children hearing about christ getting into the scriptures all of the stuff the church it is not the church's responsibility chiefly to raise up my child in the way they should go. You, if you're a parent that depends on Awana and Sunday school and Wednesday kids, whatever, and VBS to teach Jesus to your kids. So you don't have to, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, no. And I think that that ties into what I, where I was going with it is that understanding that, like you said, the kids, we've already talked about kids watching you, but they're also watching the church community as well, especially if you're in church every yeah. week. So playing this into the church's responsible and responsibility and child rearing specifically, they're like, I think if we fully understood just how much influence we have over the people's lives in our sphere that we have, we would take it that a lot more seriously and not so like lackadaisical and just eh, kind of a mentality. Because you're speaking volumes of how, like, if I go, when I go to church Sunday, how I interact with other people, my daughter's watching that. And the expectation would be logically that this is how Christians interact then, right? Versus how Christians maybe interact with unbelievers or outs, outside, people outside the church. Because, I mean, for example, and we have plenty of Paul's letters talking about how, how Christians should act toward each other versus how Christians act in the world and how, how we deal with sin in the church versus how we deal with sin out in the world. And the idea is that this covenant that we're making, whether you make it or not, when you're part of a church, like how you interact, even though you don't think you're influencing somebody else's kid, you are by how you interact with other people in the church. Um, so the idea being, of course, like for example, just as a pastor, or a youth pastor, if you're not audibly saying like, hey, mom, dad, you should be doing this. I'm a supplement. 
then like you're, you're sending a message to that kid as the youth pastor, for example, if you're being the one that's giving them all the doctrine, all the dogma, all the things, and you're actually contradicting what their parents are saying, give or take, depending on if it's solid or not. Again, that's a little iffy gray area there, but yeah. Um, if you're trying to be the authority in that kid's life, that's problematic. And <laughs> so you're, 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 it's one of those things where you're, there's this line of you are influencing them in a way, but the idea is this is supplement. It's this, it's this, I'm here to assist. I'm here to give you the tools that you need. Um, the last thing I would want is, you know, one of my kids coming home from youth group going to be like, well, pastor Josh said this and you're wrong. Okay. Well, me and pastor Josh are going to have a few words then. Um, just, you know, to figure out why in the world, I mean, if he actually said that, or if he's actually contradicting what I'm saying, or you know, try to work out what happened there. The idea yeah. being that the church community, like I don't need Aunt Edna coming up and telling my kid I'm stupid. Right. That's, that's the idea here is that like how we interact with one another um, speaks volumes to the kids. Um, so like if there are any questions, like I get a lot of questions through DMs from students a lot. My first response, well, when I used to answer DMs, somebody else does that now, but when I used to answer them, it was ask your parents, ask your pastor. Um, I'm not like, I'm not that authority in your life. Like, I'm glad you have that question. It's a really good question. You should ask your parents that question. If your parents aren't Christian, yeah. you should ask your pastor that question. Um, like there's a, there's, there's a way that we interact with, you know, within the body that is an assist to raising kids, but it's much more of a, I'm pointing you back to your godly parents. I'm here to assist them. Um, because I said that I was going to assist them <laughs> in your raising. So if you have a question and your dad said this one thing, I think Vody Bauckham actually gave a really good example of this one time. He says that people will come all the time to like places that he's speaking at, or they'll email him and be like, well, my pastor said this, what's your opinion? And he goes, I'm not going to give you my opinion because you should listen to your pastor. I'm not your pastor. And it's the same sort of thing in the situation in which, um, again, it's assuming the pastor is preaching doctrinally, of course, but yep. it's the same assumption at church. If you're, you know, if some kid comes up and be like, well, my dad said this about this. What do you think? Well, I think you should listen to your dad. That's assuming that I believe that he's, you know, doctrinally sound. And even if he's not, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to go talk to him real quick and let him know that this question came up. Um, and again, I think there's boundaries there to be had. Um, but it goes back to, you know, operating as a family. So. Yeah, it, it really is um, an important thing. I, I way way off topic, um, <clears throat> but when you were talking about the youth group and and stuff, I, when uh, we have we actually have uh, quite a bit. I don't, I'm not a part of it uh, at this point at all, really, except every once in a while when they have me in there to answer random questions that I haven't prepared for. Um, but <laughs> when um, there's actually, um, se there are several kids, students, sorry. Uh, there are several students, mm -hmm. um, in the youth group <clears throat> who are, uh, from other churches who maybe don't have a youth group or from, uh, Catholic, um, mm -hmm. uh, parents are Catholic who maybe do or don't attend or participate yeah. at all or whatever. We actually, I just found out mix. I just found out Monday morning, dude, that we have a kid in our youth group that has been coming for like a year or more that is Mormon. That's a mind trip for him or her. And wants to go to the, the youth conference uh, it, that they have gone to. Um, it's kind of the normal thing now that it's uh, stand to reason puts it on. It's an apologetics. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. So they're, they're going to that in Minneapolis. Um, this, uh, I don't know, November or whatever it is. And this kid wants to go to that. Like uh, pretty cool. Anyway, yeah. um, gonna rock your so, world. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the, the church, um, I think I think if there's if there's something that I see lacking, um, it is it is that um, idea that, and I think this is this is true in our generation as well. Like when we were coming up in like youth group and stuff, 
there's such a tendency for parents to rely on the church to do all of the Bible training Mm -hmm. with their kids. Um, And uh, this is, this is why you see like, so maybe the church has some youth volunteers and then it's big enough and whatever, and they hire a youth pastor. And now all of a sudden no one wants to volunteer because there's a pastor for that. It's his job or whatever. Right. And um, this is, this is a big problem. And it's a problem because, because that's, that's literally how we view it. Right. Like, okay, well, there's a guy for that. Like that's, that's their job. I'm just supposed to pay my taxes on time and live correctly in front of them. Right. Um, so the, it, I, I'll say it this way. It's, it is not the primary, primarily it's your job. You're the one who will be judged on it. You're the one who has to stand before God and give an account for how your children were raised, not the church. Mm-hmm secondarily it is the job of the church to come alongside you spur you on in that effort yeah and and help answer questions and develop you as you develop them yeah and i think that's gr- that is a great to say i think we flip those yeah yeah that's where the issue comes like those are great distinctives but we often get those so flipped around that we're like we just want to be the help you do it when it's actually supposed to, because it's the easier thing to do like i don't have as much responsibility that way um mm-hmm. but yeah those i mean i think everyone recognizes those two categories like that i don't think that's a, that's the confusion i think that oftentimes like you said those are just flopped those are just yeah. flipped around and um somewhere along the line that came i'm, I'm sure historically somebody could point out a moment where that you know, was enabled, but yeah, for sure that's flipped. Um, so, okay. So let's use this, let's get this into practicality then. So, um, with that being true, I would say, as we've already talked about, I mean, I believe that probably most churches don't function as well as we could in like a Titus two sort of mentality. Um, what are some actionable steps that you guys do maybe that enable that the congregation to come around and fulfill that, that obligation they've said they want to be a part of? Well, I think um, one of the things is language. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's important when we talk about ourselves being family, like, um, but it also plays out in, like whenever I do talk about Awana, um, but you, you familiar with Awana? I, I know the general gist. Yes. It's okay. sort of it like, just, it's like a Sunday it, school, but like more doctrinal sort of kids ministry. Yeah. 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 Wednesday night kids ministry. Yep. So if it's a wanna for you, whatever, if it's not, then that's what it is. Yeah. Um, the, the, so they're learning scripture, they're memorizing Bible verses, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, so we do a wanna. Okay. That's, that's great. We actually have a lot of kids in Awana who um, that maybe aren't Mormon, but they're from out in town who are, aren't part of our church. Like it's, so it's an outreach ministry as well, right? Mm-hmm. At some level. Now, obviously, if mom and dad don't go to church, don't really care one way or the other, um, have enough moral compass to, to say, well, we should make sure they do this or whatever. Um, that, that's well and good. I'm obviously not expecting that set of parents to be the ones training their kids in the way they should go. Cause they're obviously not doing that. Yeah. And I hope they hear this. Um, but, but for, for those parents who are part of our church, right. Who are part of the family. Um, Awana is absolutely just a supplemental thing. If you choose to, so Wyatt, my youngest is in Awana this year. Right. Um, to be fair, he hasn't been every year, um, that, that we've been here, but, um, Awana is just another supplemental thing to add to what your job is at home, like to add to what, you know, so um, what, what I'll tell parents who um, is is that Awana is something that is good uh, for you as a Christian parent to utilize, use it as you train your children, walk them through their lesson that week, help them do their Awana homework kind of stuff, like be with them and, and train them. Cause at the end of the day, uh, we do our best. Um, but, uh, <laughs> we do our best to vet things and, and, and whatever else. But at the end of the day, we'll, we likely will have people who, um, work at Awana who aren't incredibly doctrinally sound. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, that's your job. Right. Um, now they're not going to hear at Awana, you know, uh, individual children being addressed as they, right. I mean, that, that kind of stuff is not going to happen, but, but you're also like, there are things that you as a parent are going to have to clarify. Mm -hmm. Right. So that would be the first thing we linguistically, I, 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 on purpose, I'm intentional about talking about Awana as a supplemental thing mm -hmm. to, to aid you at home. Right. Um, yeah, here's your bottle think, of vitamins. You still have to feed them. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think, um, too, there, there's, um, uh, it, it's part of <laughs> this sounds, uh, obvious maybe, but it's part of how I teach and preach. Right. I, I very often from the pulpit, I understand we have a lot of young families in our church, a lot of young families in our church. Um, I mean, people are popping babies out like it's COVID every year, right? <laughs> and um, well, to be fair, it has been COVID for about two years. <laughs> oh, oh well, sure. I guess from now on, it's COVID every year. Anyway, um, not to get uh, uh, yeah. that's a rabbit. Uh, that's a rabbit hole. All right, um, but uh, but we it's it's part of just how I teach and preach. It 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 it's something I'm not afraid to say from the pulpit. In fact, I know I've made people mad before uh, for being blunt from the pulpit. Um, most people would say that's why they come <laughs> to the preaching part. Yeah. But, um, but when, when, we, uh, when, when I talk about it, we're doing the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith for Sunday school, adult Sunday school, right? Like we're walking through every little piece of it. Um, well, part of that is because I view it as, as my job and as elders, we view it as our job to equip the saints for ministry. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that in this world means having something scripturally sound to stand on, mm -hmm. to know what scripture says about this, that, and the other thing. So that when, while they're parenting, while they're getting questions from their kids, and I'll, I'll say these things, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, like an example I might use is your, your, your kids at school are going to be bombarded with this and that. Right. And so um, I, I might use that as um, illustration or to make a point or something like that, of why this or that's important for us to know um, scriptural answers to. So I think it's just part of the lifeblood, right? Like that's the, the short answer. It, it has to be part of just who you are as a church. It's got to be part of the culture as a church. And part of the way um, uh, what, what anyone will tell you, even the secular um, people who are trying to get <laughs> uh, crazy um, unbiblical things passed and ingrained in culture, one of the main things that they do is language, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so yeah. it's not, it's not pro-abortion, it's pro-choice. And they do that kind of stuff on purpose because that works. Yeah. When, when language um, and, and what you talk about gets, it, it, it gets ingrained and it becomes part of the culture over time. If you don't like it, just change the definition. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, exactly. No, cool. No, I think that, that that's a really good answer in regards to answering the very broad question of it, of like, if, how, how, how do you get people participating in it? Well, you don't just say, this is what we do now. You actually, it's part of, it's part of everything that you do to where it's an understanding of like, I'm not just, and again, that goes back to perfectly to the second episode. Like it's living that out. Like, yeah. okay, we don't just say from the pulpit that, Hey, we expect you to do this. We, okay, well, here's a class that gives you tools. Here's the Iwanas that's going to send home questions for you to participate in. Like, like, you're not going to get away from it. <laughs> like it's going to, yeah. it's going to be very apparent that, Oh, they didn't just say this. They actually do it. Like they believe it. I have to participate. Like I don't have an option out of it. Um, yeah, yeah that's good. And I think, yeah, and go ahead. No, well, I think that's the way to really press home the importance of it. Like it's not just saying, Hey, you need to interact with your kids about the Bible. It's here is a sheet that's going to, I mean, to give you the very thing that you would make an excuse. Well, I don't know how to do that. Well, here's a sheet that gives you mm -hmm. questions to ask them. So, I mean, that it puts the stuff in their hands. Another practical thing, um, uh, two things real briefly uh, is one, the video that I just put out, right? Like that, that went 
to our church's Facebook page. Um, I know it was shared around a little bit among some of those folks um, uh, of how to do, how to lead family worship. Um, so there's an expectation that we're doing that. Um, uh, what that looks like per family is obviously different per family. Um, but so there's an expectation there. There is now um, a, a little baby 30 minute bit of training um, to get your feet wet. Um, in the in the near future, there's probably going to be an extension of that where I'm going to get, excuse me, get online and say, um, if if this is something that you're really having a hard time getting your feet wet, like really having a hard time kicking it off and and knowing what you're doing, then um, I want to invite people to come to my house and watch it happen mm, with their yeah. family, right? Um, so there there needs to be a, uh, some sort of uh, discipleship at that level. Um, well, what's interesting, I don't mean to interject, but I will totally do this. I just recently learned and we were talking about this before we started recording way back, but like, apparently that's how the Puritans did it. You, yeah. it was yep. the idea of, I'm not going to teach you by telling you you're coming over to my house and you're going to have dinner with us and you're going to, you're going to see it and you're going to participate in it. And you're that, that is what gives you the tools to do it is participating yeah. with me in it. Yeah. At, at the risk of sounding too uh, simplistic, that's also sort of how Jesus did it. <laughs> yeah. I guess you got me there. Yeah. <laughs> I wow. mean, but, but, uh, honestly though, like that, that's, that's the way we disciple, right. By, by people seeing. And so, um, but it's way countercultural in, in our world today, right? Like it's so my picket fence is six feet tall and you can't see through it, right? Like period. So, um, and, and when we, when we invite people over, we do it and we even call it entertaining, yeah. right? Yeah. Rather than, you know, ha having, well, having people your, come your, as your family. You know? cleaned, all the toys are picked up. Like this is the ideal best situation. We've spent three hours doing this. <laughs> Don't mess anything up kids. Yep. 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 <laughs> Does the I house smell? Light some candles. We can't let that. them know anything <laughs> happens in here. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of the pets. Get rid of the pets. <laughs> Hide them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's, it's important, right? So mm -hmm. that's, that's, so that's another thing that um, uh, probably is going to be happening um, in the near future. Yeah. Uh, if, if anyone takes me up on that. Um, and um. Let's see, how else do we do that? So we've actually just started, I mean, just started. Uh, we've done two weeks of Every Man a Warrior. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I have not. But no. it's, um, it's a really good curriculum for manhood. Um, like toxic manhood, masculinity, or like... Yes, absolutely. We want to be as toxic as far as the culture is concerned as possible. <laughs> um, and Quote, Rob, we want to be as t masculinely toxic as possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. As biblically masculinely toxic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but it, I mean, the, there are three books that um, you go through. Um, and the first whole book is, is uh, really just about um, your personal relationship with God. What like getting you started on devotion time, a God time with you and that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, you move into all the way into things like managing your money, right. And being a husband and a father and, and, um, sexual purity and all the things. Right. Um, and I think that that in the future, I see that as being a really solid, uh, help and th that will bleed into this topic. Um, because we're, we're intentionally, I think with that going to end up discipling men, um, to go and then lead their homes. Like it's, it's an expected thing that you're going to be an intentional husband and an intentional father biblically. Um, so it, it'll work its way into that. Um, yeah. No, oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And I think what, and the, so the two things there, one modeling it, but two setting up a path for fathers to do something like giving them the tools that they likely 
probably haven't had depending on their upbringing um, in order to, to, to set people up for success. Not just saying, here's the law, this is how you should do it, but giving people tools and a culture that li- they live within that, that nourishes that. Um, and yeah. not just being like, you know, law, 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 but saying, no, actually, there's a whole bunch of grace here. There's a whole bunch of help here. There's a whole bunch of things that, you know, you're not going to fall into this overnight. These are developed habits and developed things that you do. So, no, cool. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, uh, I, th- <laughs> I, I think there's another aspect of this that, um, that churches need to think about. Um, and that's, um, with your women, um, the, uh, so there, is, there are women's Bible studies, um, that will maybe just run and grab the latest, I don't know, Beth Moore, whatever. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I'll stay off of that subject. Not a fan for the most part. I could, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, the, the, but that's the big, yeah, name, that's what they right? do. like. They'll, 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 um, Beth Moore, there are some others, but, um, and I don't, I don't not, those things aren't all bad, right. All of them. I, I mean, I don't know who all of these folks are, but, um, but there's one that my wife and another gal are leading the same study at different times to accommodate uh, different groups. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's just Jude, right? I saw uh, that. It's yeah. Jackie, Jackie Hill Perry's Jude, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's still a study that is, you know, uh, come from somebody, but it's somebody that, you know, we, we know for sure is trustable and, and you don't have to worry about anything creeping in. And, and two, one of the things that my wife, when, uh, this is the second time she's led, um, the, the second year, uh, something like this. And the first time, uh, I think the, the very first week there were several women, uh, from our church and from outside of our church. There's several people from outside of our church that were there. Um, and, uh, historically, I want to be careful how I word this it, historically, one of the Bible studies uh, one of the struggles was it, it sort of just became slowly and not all the time, but at times a complaint about my husband and my life status, right? Um, which is not helpful, right? Yeah. Uh, venting is necessary at times. Absolutely. We all need to do that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but but when when it's a, when it's an everybody thing, right? And, and you're not going anywhere, mm-hmm. um, it, it's not helpful, right? And in yeah. fact, you're sinning. I'll just be blunt. Right. Um, and so uh, when my wife started leading the, the, the first time she did it, it was one of the things that she struggled with when she was just a part of Mm -hmm. a similar kind of thing. Um, and so I, one of the first things she did was say that, uh, like this, we're not going to do that. This is just just from the beginning. Don't even, this this is a study. We're here to learn uh, scripture and how to, you know, whatever. Um, and I, I think like maybe half, uh, never came back. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't want to assume, I, and I'm here, if yeah. you're listening to this, I'm not saying that yeah, you didn't yeah. come back because of that, but, but it's just, it, it, you know, it's, it's good though. It's a big problem. You, you need to disciple men to be men and women to be godly women as well, yeah, like yeah. at the same time. Right. Yeah. No, for sure. And the nice thing is like, again, I mean, not just that you're setting the tone for the women's ministry, but you're setting that same tone, like the tone, that's the point. You're setting the tone, as, uh, seeing far enough out from primary experiences elsewhere that, okay, these were the issues. So let's just nip those in the bud from the beginning and just be like, from the beginning, this is not what this is. This is not the purpose of this thing. If it does start, we're going to cut it out. And when this is what we're here for. And like, again, setting that, but I think that again, goes back to what you said before, as far as the culture and the language and the purpose. Yep. People know from day one, when they get into that Bible study that like that, that's what this is. And it's only, the only reason we're doing this is to build on this other building block that then builds on this other building block. Um, and when the tone is set like that from the beginning, you will have people <laughs> duck out pretty quick because they're like, oh, this is actually, they're actually serious. <laughs> like, oh, this, isn't, this isn't fun time for me. This isn't a time away from my kids or my wife or my husband. Like, this is work. This is what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. 
No, that's good. I like it. I think that, and that, that goes a long way to then feeding into the congregation because if everybody's on that same page, like you were talking about before and everybody has that understanding, um, even though it seems like it's disconnected from the church raising, you know, helping raise kids, it's actually foundational because now your dad is in the group with this dad, which, you know, this mom's in this group with this mom and they're all learning the same thing. Um, and actually like we talked about earlier, right? So when you're baby dedication or whatever you want to call it, you're saying, I'm going to help you. Well, sometimes that doesn't look like babysitting or taking care of. Sometimes that just means you're sitting in the same room and you're actually just doing one-on-one discipleship with somebody. I mean, that's a help in itself, yep. helping them raise their kids. Um, and sometimes that looks like intentionally not bailing them out. Yeah. Yeah. For young, for young parents, there's a temptation for all sorts of struggles and things and that you can fall into. And so sometimes it's like, nope, you need to figure that one out. Yeah. You're going to have to go and through That's that, the right? mature thing to, to do to help. Yeah. You know? No, for sure. And yeah. Well, and yeah, my father-in-law does that a lot. Like, he'll be like, <laughs> Well, no, this is what I mean by that. And I want to give a really good example because it has been helpful. It's annoying as all can get out, but it's really helpful to where it's like, hey, I need your, primarily on cars because he's a car guy. I need your help on this, which in my head initially was he'll just do this for me and I'll watch. And what that turned out to be was, all right, Mike, here's the wrench. This is what you need to do next. If you bleed, I'll jump in. But like it was, <laughs> it was literally... I re- I remember the time that I realized that like this isn't going the way that I thought it was going to go. It was hey, we're going to change the brakes, which I thought meant I'll stand there and hand you things and you change the brakes. What that turned into is me with my sleeves rolled up underneath this car doing the brakes while he's like, "No, you need to do that next. No, you need to do that next. All right, now do this." And getting done in which his hands are clean and I am like my knuckles are all bloodied up because I changing brakes was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. And like, that's what it looks like. Sometimes, you know, that, like you said, it's standing back and being like, I'll give you tips, but I'm not doing this for you. Like you need to yeah. learn this. Um, yeah, perfect. That's a great, yeah, great point. Don't jump in every time because it's not helpful. Yeah. <laughs> if he would have done that, guess who would have come back to him for the next problem? Hey, I need you to fix this this time. Now I need you to fix this. No, now I know that if I go to him, he's going to help, but he's not doing it for me. And that, that's, that's really helpful thing to have in a church to know that you have people that'll do that. So to be super fair, I I actually am uh, blessed with the church that we have because we have, um, we have tons that we, so we even have a a huge uh, population of our family, percentage of our families that are homeschool families. Um, Not because that's what I preach or anything like that. It was just like that. Um, And we, um, open our building to three separate homeschool co-ops throughout the week, like one day a week, each of them do a thing, you know, um, one of them is the one that I'm a part of that our kids are in and I lead devotions for that. Um, and so like, we're, we're really, uh, blessed with a lot of people who are, um, that intentional. Um, and even, and even the, the, I don't want to paint the picture that they're the holy ones. We have a lot of a lot uh, we have some who go to the the christian school here in town and they're intentional about it um and they're involved and they they talk to their kids they want to know what's going on and we have public school version of that as well where like parents understand at, at this church if you walk away not understanding that you're the parent you're the one that's responsible then you walk away that way um because you've chosen not to listen mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean that that's the only way out um um in that conversation. So um I think you it, it just has to be part of your church culture. Yeah. Um and and that might that might be as simple in the beginning as as starting to talk about it. I mean that that's really where it begins, you know. Yeah. If you're not there yet as as a church then um then one you need to be and you need to understand the the seriousness of that. Um and two, it doesn't need to be some major oh, seriousness. I said seriousness, and now here Siri's going to tell me <laughs> stupid. 
Yeah, it's oversensitive when you don't need it, but when you're asking a real question, it can't help you at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have to say it like 15 times, yeah. and she still doesn't know. She's just, oh, the internet says this on Google. Um, uh, but no, no, anyway, it, I like it's that. very serious, and, and the church needs to know that, and it's as easy to start as let's, let's talk, talk about, about this. It. Yeah, cool, cool, yeah. cool. No, I think that's a good way to wrap it up is understanding that like, like all of these are little pieces to a much bigger puzzle, and they have to work together um to 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 get you know get to a place that's helpful so all right well good deal man guys hopefully this was helpful i mean you know we're we're perfect and subject matter experts so if you have any questions just you know we'll definitely you know know the answers so <laughs> send those emails to rob um yeah it's it's my email is m i um <laughs> good luck you're not getting my email like that's not even <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully like i said guys if it was helpful it was helpful uh comments uh down below i i try to answer those i don't get to those very often but if you found it helpful um you shared and things like that so we will talk to you next month with a subject that we won't know until the day before so talk to you later <laughs> bye bye <laughs>